Do you ever sing classical tunes like you sing pop tunes? Yeah, for sure. Especially like Goretzky and a lot of like choir music, Lasso, you know, which is more church music and choir. But, you know, for sure, for sure, like yeah, it's stuck in your head. You know, it's Chopin, it's gonna be stuck in your head. You know. There's lots of beautiful melodies and stuff. So yeah, yeah, for sure. So what's your favorite? What's what's the number one hit song you in the my classical My favorite classical music is by far New Age by Debussy. I think mean, that's one of my, I don't know, it just transports me. And I also like, you know, is my favorite, so there's a couple. Like, I love New Age. It's kind of a tie between New Age and, uh, I never can say the title, but Prelude to La Comédie de la Fun. So I always forget to fuck it up. It's, it's just more because of the melody, combination, and orchestration. It's just transports you somewhere else. So. How does it go? That one I never can sing properly, so I, I can't sing that one. Right? It's too complicated. <laughs> it's more of that step please, but I mean, New Age is, is more like. It's, but it's, the voicings are like amazing, big, amazing harmony that just like, just feel a lot in somewhere else, you know, each other like. So, uh, uh, you're going to play at uh, Crosslinks? I would like to do New Ash. I think that would be a great challenge to do with the band. We did it a bit with the concept of Bauer. We started where Simon had this kind of very uh, like big crush guitar sound, which is very synthetic. It started off the New Ash and the orchestra came in over it, which was really nice, but we didn't have the time to develop the idea. And I think with the, with the, with the strings, I think we will have the time to work out that philosophy of because I, if if I were to put Debussy, I guess in this era, and if you, you know if I would picture him working in this era, I, would, I, I don't know if the, necessarily the notes change, but you know concert arrangement, I think he'd be someone very inspired by electronic, you know, influences. Because you know when he started doing his arrangements, he would do things you know where he'd take really real life like a carriage passing by, he'd like do really chromatic tones to try to emulate sound design, you know. And if you listen to Nuage or La Mar is a great example, you hear the waves crashing. Not by notes, but really by the, the arrangements. So it's very kind of, really kind of visual arrangements. In it, which I, so I think you'd probably be really inspired by, by electronic music and just we're dealing with sound. You know, the so. way you talk about it, you you bring it very close to this area uh, era. Well, I think I think in a way, he, you know, impressionisms and Eric Satie and all those guys were very much a part of inspiring the guys who started developing synths and minimalism. So I think that the, they definitely took like concentrating on notes and chords. And then started to really work on building the arrangements to be really unmusical and more sound effects, you know. And I think that for I know this Muller and this Berlioz as well that are really important. But I think WC was like another step in terms of like this crazy. Well, the planets by you know the planets by Holst has it has a bit of element that like when you get to Neptune, like you feel the cold, you know, get into your bones and stuff. But you know, I think that that definitely WC is real. It's very sound effecty, you know, like. Sometimes his melodies are not that melodic and they crash into the next chord progression like a wave in the matter. And I think he's a very literal... I guess Liszt started by doing that a bit when he started doing his... his what was it called? The symphonic poems. Where he started to try to make orchestrated poems and he started to make... Try to be outside of a... You know, breaking the, the tradition of like making an arrangement that's musical necessarily and bringing the orchestration into like more sound effects and making them as part of the lyrics, you know? like. New Ash looks and sounds like like the clouds going by. The voicings give you the feeling of what it looks like. Or the Maya, or the first beginning, those big low ends, the big swells, they, they sound like the ocean, they look like the ocean too. And I think that, I guess for me, I find it inspiring. But there's, I mean, there's lots of composers at the time that started to push those boundaries. Because Shostakovich, or let's say Stravinsky, was totally different because they were still in a very much a way of like dealing with music equations, and but trying to find random music equations to break out of the box. I think Debussy did it in a way, breaking out of the box in a much more poetic way, where he emulated other sounds and, and, and broke the barriers in trying to, in a very in a very poetic way, not a very systematic way. I'm gonna interfere now. Yeah. These are all my interpretations, so I in classical guy might hate what I'm saying maybe right now, but <laughs> this guy's full of shit, so you know, I don't wanna burn my tail or nothing, but that's just my interpretation. Are you a pop musician? I mean, I play songs, you, you know. You seem to know your classical tunes. I, I'm much more inspired by classical music than pop music. Where would you be without classical music as a musician? 
Uh, I remember I was, I was getting out of CJ, at the end of CJ, I was studying jazz and I knew pop and I, I, I didn't know that much classical music and then when I heard like, I started hearing classical music and I started to get my itch back because I did it when I was a kid. I don't know, I, and then the combination of that of hearing pop music, I, it was kind of a, I needed the two to make it work. One or the other didn't really... Is that what you tried to do? To make them work together? Well, it's, I don't see classical music as, as a as finished thing, you know, like I, I don't know... I, Isn't it that? I don't, I don't, I, I think it's that in a way that people treat it like that way, in a way that, you know, when you're schooled, in the way that the infrastructure around classical music, I think, is its biggest problem, you know, like, my favorite classical nights I ever spent, we used to go to this loft, and it was like a bunch of string players, and everybody, it would be a party where people bring partitions, and everybody would get drunk and play different classical pieces, and you'd be sitting there drinking and listening to classical music outside of the big la di da place, and it just became much more about, like, the music instead of the circumstance around the music, and it was by far more touching. And I think that, I feel like the circumstance that classical music is in the way they come on stage and the whole, I think, I think it kills, it, it's killing classical music because I don't think Beethoven or Mozart or any of these famous guys are like these clean and proper guys. I mean, most of them are fucking drunks and kind of crazy creatures, you know? And I, Bit like you. Well, you wouldn't call I, yourself Beethoven, wouldn't call that, no. but I just, I'm just saying that, I just think that people, it gives this thing where like, classical music is this very straight and, and conservative type of music where, I think it's dealing with the same emotional, the same emotions and same things that pop music does in a very different way, but I wouldn't put, I don't, I don't picture like, God, I can't have a part of this very conservative, you know, they're very kind of crazy people who are very inspiring and very kind of weird and awkward and, but then like, you know, you, when you do like the way you go out with an orchestra and the way everybody walks in and the whole formality, I think, destroys the music because I think it takes away the human aspect of the music and makes it like this old traditional thing. I don't think it's that old, I don't think it's about that, you know, I think it's about making beautiful emotions happen and I think they lose all that crap. It'd be a lot more fun to go see a classical show. So now you start working with the, the Amsterdam Sinfonietta? Yeah. Uh, it's those guys, they wear the suits, they do all that. Yeah, but... It, Where do you connect? I think, I think, it's, I think it's, it's because, for some reason, the classical world does it that way, so everybody just does it that way. I don't, it's not their fault or anything like that, but like... I don't think it helps the music. How do you connect with them? Well, we have lots in common in music, you know. It's like when we did the concert about we have lots of common in music tastes and we... And, you know, I think even it's kind of nice when they, they play with the band, they don't have to deal with it in such a serious way. They get to feel more relaxed but still play the same music. And I think that... I don't have that much of a different approach, you know, in a way. Whether, okay, we play pop music because parts of the songs are simpler and... But I mean, if we go back to Haydn, you know, if we go back to classical music, there's still simple songs as well, you know, like, it's just, it's just a language that's developed out of that music. They're not two different things. They don't, they don't like, it's not like classical music, then classical music died and pop music happened, you know. It's a, it's a complete transition from, like, classical music and then into the 20th century, it gets a little crazy, so when jazz comes, and then it becomes, like, show tunes a bit, and then show tunes turn into, and then mixes with blues, and then, you know, it's a big... It's a weird curving thing connecting the dots with all of them and then eventually it comes to pop music. But it's not like a, it comes out of nowhere, it's a guy never heard. Okay, so uh, I, I see the line behind me. Where is it going? Well, I think... Will they meet again? Well, they constantly meet all, all, and then they, they get far away from each other. Like, I, I, I would say that it's a band like Radiohead is where classical music came back in again to meet pop music, you know? Like, all the chord progressions the harmonic is much more, let's say, cla traditional classical music than it is traditional pop music, you know, but even in a band of Beatles, you know, half their arrangements are, you know, these orchestral classical middle transitions, you know, like Day in the Life has this kind of orchestral middle part, or, you know, ba -ba 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 Penny Lane, you know, like, oh, there's lots of influences of classical music in the Beatles that, and nobody ever really talks about it because Beatles are so pop, but nobody ever asks the question, well, half, my, half of it sounds really classical to me, you know, so I mean, it's kind of, I just think it's a, it's a bit ridiculous to say that I separate the two as much for me. Um, you're gonna write new pieces for this uh, uh, concert? Yeah, I would is that like a to. different process? <coughs> well, because I mean, I have different instruments to work with, so it's, it's a different sound. So for sure, it takes into consideration you can do things you can't do without a big string ensemble, you know, for sure. And uh, I'd like to write. I always wanted to write a piece based on uh, Blind Willie Johnson's this old blues writer that sent this music "Space in the Voyager Satellite," you know, the one on the golden disc. And I started writing a piece. That was supposed to be for for orchestra and, and, and guitar it, about sending this blind bluesman into a satellite to talk to aliens. I find it's a very funny, weird idea. So I always wanted to do an orchestral piece based on that. But is it 
is it a different process making yes. music with a band and making music with a because uh, you're in arrangement land you know when you have like 25 or you when you have a lot of instruments with you, you you a lot of your time is spent on dreaming about you know you write your melodies and you can write your structure of song which is very similar to any way you write a pop song but when it comes to the actual arrangement and putting it together you're gonna get into your you're gonna have to you're gonna have to to hear it in your head and it's not like we sit with a band and find a sound like you have to do a lot of process in your in your in your head and we're not a piano to dream about what kind of colors you're going to use in terms of the arrangement and what colors you want to bring out and so it becomes like a bit a bit more of something you can build in your head more than just playing piano and singing so it's going to be a surprise for you as well no i do it often as soon as you play it but yeah that's one of the best parts of it is that it's kind of really rewarding when you dream up a piece and you write it down and then you hear it it's really mind blowing, and it makes you want to cry every time. You're like, oh wow! You're like, it's like 45 people playing my song. It's yeah. like so powerful that you know. Or well, does it make you want to cry because it so sounded touchy. totally different in your head? Well, because well, it's not that it's so different. It's like when you write something on a piece of paper, and then you hear it for the first time. It's a, it's a, it's like when back in the old days when you take photos and you, you print them, you're like, oh, that excitement of like that distance before you get the. It always makes the, you know, the feeling when it happens is really special. You know? so, Sweet old ashes laugh, celebrate your dream. 